Joining me now, political writer for the Louisville Courier Journal, Joseph Girth, along with founder and president of the National Center for Neighborhood Enterprise, Bob Woodson, who's a conservative and conservative radio talk show host, Steve Dace. Thank you all for joining us. Greatly appreciate it. So, Steve, let me start off with you here, um, because we've talked candidly in the past. You were very much against Mitt Romney's campaign. Uh, you've been looking for the perfect conservative candidate for some time. Let me play what J.C. Watts just said, the congressman, uh, just a short time ago about um, why he is standing with Rand Paul and even attending this event today. Let's play it. But I think he's been a different kind of Republican, a Jack Kemp kind of Republican in terms of, I think, growing growing the party. And, you know, I've had his ear over the last two, two and a half years. I, I encourage him to go to Ferguson. I, I incur, we set up meetings for him in Detroit and Atlanta and Chicago and other places around the country to talk about issues that, that I, I think impacts uh, different communities. And, and he's done that. He's done it consistently. I think he's been sincere. He says he's done it consistently in this outreach, but for a lot of people, there are inconsistencies that are being discussed today on foreign policy, for example, uh, where he stands with Israel, another big point that's been made there. I, I'll point to uh, a budget, for example, where he wanted to uh, eliminate foreign aid to Israel, but then later uh, said that that was not the case, Steve. Well, Tamron, the things you're pointing out, and I'll say this, J.C. Watts is my buddy. I love him to death. But, but what I see on the ground in Iowa is that Rand Paul has lost considerable support in the last year and a half, particularly given the, the many topsy-turvy positions he has taken on things. You look at an issue like illegal immigration, for example, I could chronicle for you, between 2013 and now, Rand Paul has taken every conceivable position from left to right on the issue of illegal immigration. And those are things that uh, just really unsettle a lot of voters and you can talk about you know expanding the pie and everything else but the reality is you got to win a primary to get to that point and, and you got to get the people that typically vote in primaries to vote for you and he has tried as an outreach to evangelicals in places like Iowa took a bunch of them to Israel on a trip I didn't go to but I was invited on a couple of years ago and it just seems like that door is closed I don't see that he's going to get a lot of evangelical support in Iowa and here in Iowa Tamron the founder of the Liberty Movement in Iowa Drew Ivers who was his father's real first lieutenant on the ground with the campaign for liberty is not even supporting Rand thinks he's abandoned too many of his father's positions I know several uh, Liberty Iowa people that are already supporting Ted Cruz and several more that will so before he worries about expanding his coalition Rand Paul's first got to hold on to the existing support base he inherited from his father Joseph you in because you've covered his career, political career, for some time. I just want to point out, for example, what's being called his shift on Iran. In uh, an interview, 2007, he says, We are against the Iraq war. We've been from the beginning, but we're also against the Iran war, the one that has not started. I think people want to paint my father into some corner, but if you look at it intellectually, look at the evidence that Iran is not a threat. Iran cannot even refine their own gasoline. Yesterday, his campaign told Bloomberg that Senator Paul will be watching closely and believes any deal with Iran must make clear Iran cannot acquire nuclear weapon, allows for full verification, and is approved by Congress. He voted for sanctions both times they were put before Congress and believes only Congress should remove those sanctions. So in one stance, 2007, Iran can't refine its own gasoline and it's not a threat, and now it appears um, a change here. Joseph. I think we must be having an audio problem. So, Steve, let, let's bring you in on that as you were talking about his shifts on immigration, this uh, issue that some conservatives uh, take with him regarding Iran. You know, I actually have a different perspective on this, Tamron, which probably doesn't surprise you. From what I see on the ground and when I talk to activists, I don't think foreign policy is nearly the problem for Rand Paul that I think a lot of Beltway people, uh, otherwise known as neocons, that's kind of become a dreaded drinking term on the right now, uh, that a lot of these, dread, these uh, neocons think. In fact, I think a lot of people on the ground here in activists, in the activist class in places like Iowa and South Carolina, they're tired of being the urban renewal program for the Middle East. They didn't want to go to war in Syria to help us. Assad and fight with or to fight Assad against Al Qaeda to fight Assad who are now helping I don't think that's nearly his problem there is a lot of concern that he's not really pro-Israel that is a major issue in a Republican primary that he will have to address but I really don't sense that there's a great big rallying on the right to go ahead 
continue the Bush doctrine of being the urban renewal program of the Middle East. I don't think that stuff's going to hurt them nearly as bad as maybe a few people inside the Beltway do. I believe that we have. Jo Joseph, are you able to hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so Steve Dace just pointed out that there are some conservatives who are concerned, for example, that Senator Paul is not pro-Israel. In 2011, we released his budget at the time for the next year. He says that while this budget proposal does eliminate foreign aid to Israel, it is not meant to hurt, negate, or single out one of America's most important allies. Well, later in an interview in last year, August, he denied that he once supported ending federal aid to Israel. Um, speak to some of these inconsistencies, whether it be Iran, uh, immigration, or this um, concern with Israel and aid that many have seized on today. Well, he, he certainly has, over the past few years, tried to get himself on the right side of issues with GOP voters. Um, you, you saw him back as early as his uh, Senate race back in uh, 2000, uh, 2010, in which he was also making comments about uh, Iran and its uh, nuclear capability, said that it wasn't a threat to uh, Iran, wasn't a threat to the, uh, wasn't, or, I'm sorry, wasn't a threat to the United States, wasn't a threat to Israel either. But, you know, over time, he is, he is, He's moved his positions. A lot of people think that he's a clone of his father. But in fact, he is really beginning to stake out his own positions on things, sometimes going against his father. And I think it shows he's a little bit better politician than his dad, that he's he's willing to figure out where the voters are and he's willing to move there to some degree. And Bob, uh, let me bring you in the conversation. Obviously, a lot has been made today about this outreach effort from Senator Paul. Um, he went to Howard University.